Uh, thank you all for coming today. My name is Ife. I'm one of the speakers today, and I'm so glad you're with us here at our breakout session. This project has been one that my team and I have been working on for almost a year now. So we are thrilled to be sharing what we've learned with all of you here today at the National Conference. I first want to acknowledge all the outstanding people who have been involved in this project. In addition to me and Irene, who will be speaking today, there is Rima Desai, Dave Kane, who is the co-lead and founder of this team, uh, Mars Knight, Sharon Liu, and John Keller, our chat monitor. We call ourselves the Motivational Presenting Team, and we are a focus group here within the National Presenters uh, and Schedulers Action Team. The work that we do tries to address this question. How can presenters motivate non-activists to take action on climate change? So let's start here. Imagine this. You are an ordinary member of a Rotary Club. You're in a room with, with 40 other people listening to a guest speaker, in this case, a CCL presenter, talk about climate change. You're shown these images of wildfires burning in California or flooding in the Midwest or destructive hurricanes that wreak havoc on the Gulf Coast. You're shown articles about how the heat is unprecedented and how our Arctic glaciers are melting faster than ever predicted. Then you're shown graphs of CO2 concentrations and carbon emissions skyrocketing and how we're headed towards a doomsday apocalypse and how does this all make you feel? For some people, it makes them feel like this. They'll be angry and upset and want to change the establishment. Yale University did a study and divided Americans into six groups based on their opinions on climate change. And they categorized these types of people as alarmed. Most of us here at CCL, we are alarmed. Unfortunately, that is only 26% of the population. A whooping 48% of the population falls into the categories of concerned and cautious, meaning that they understand that climate change is happening, but haven't quite grasped the severity of the problem or aren't motivated to act yet. Research has shown over and over again that these images and graphs of catastrophes aren't effective on the concerned and cautious. They feel overwhelmed by these images. They feel scared and afraid of the enormous problem that we're facing. That is no feeling of motivation. But the reality is that we need their support. We need to expand our climate message towards a larger audience if we're going to fix this problem. So how do we do that? How do we motivate the concerned and cautious to join us? We did some research, we read articles, we talked to sociologists, and they have reiterated over and over again that people are more likely to engage in a social cause if they feel a personal affinity to that cause. One line from this paper, the psychology of climate change communication says, ensuring that people feel a personal connection with climate change without becoming overwhelmed is key. We found that one of the best ways to build that personal connection is through telling your own narrative and thus inviting others to empathize and share their own. And that is a, the approach that we will be demonstrating today, something that we call the aha narrative. You all know narratives. How many of you have had this intimate relationship with a book before? where you fell in love with the characters and could have put it down? How many of you have read a story in the news or listened to a podcast and felt moved by somebody else's experiences? It invites people to empathize over shared experiences, developing that relationship with the speaker and climate change. So let's dig deeper into that concept of narrative. A story has a structure. This is a typical plot line that, we, uh, that is used by majority of stories. In the beginning, you, we introduce the characters, then a problem develops into a climax, and then a solution unfolds into the resolution. A climate narrative looks similar, but we're going to simplify our focus down to the middle three elements. Like any story, the climate story takes you through a journey. At the beginning, in the problem statement, we introduce the idea 
of accepting that climate change is a problem. That builds up into hope that this problem can be solved. Then a specific action will be presented, one that could bring that solution into a reality. And it is this, acceptance, hope, and action. That is what we call the aha narrative. If this theory doesn't make sense to you right now, don't worry. Uh, that is why we have Irene here today. She will demonstrate exactly how an aha presentation to a concerned and cautious audience could go. As you listen to Irene's story, I ask that you look for what she does to create that motivational aha, acceptance, hope, and action. All right. Thank you so much, Ife, for that great introduction. I am Irene. Nice to meet y'all. Thanks for coming. Secondly, I want to say that's my LinkedIn photo. I don't normally look so dorky. And lastly, I want to get down to business, but I was born and raised in Houston, Texas. When I tell most people that I'm from Texas, most people imagine my childhood looked a little bit like this, you know, riding my horse to school through the desert. But in reality, Houston is built on a giant swamp and my childhood looked a lot like this. One of my favorite things to do every summer was playing in the flooded streets outside of my house. Of course, I was just a kid, so I didn't understand anything about the real seriousness of the flooding, why my parents always looked so concerned, and why I knew even less about climate change and why it was making these rainstorms, tropical storms, hurricanes more and more intense each year. You know, I was just excited that there was hurricane days each year, kind of like snow days, which meant I didn't have to go to school. Well, as I grew older, educated myself and you know, moving away from the oil and gas capital of the US, I started seeing the cracks in my worldview. After moving to California, I started to realize that Houston's yearly floods were not normal. That, you know, swimming outside of the window of a car wasn't a normal teenage rite of passage. That climate change and the ensuing flooding in the Gulf caused real damage and pain to a lot of people. Each year during hurricane season, you know, I always call my parents, ask like, oh, are you all right? I heard there's some flooding, is the house okay? But these past few years, my parents are the ones who get to send me concerned texts. So as you might know, California has been catching fire recently. This is the view from my living room window this month or a couple of months ago. This was taken at noon. Waking up under an eerie orange sky isn't something I want future generations to experience. You know, after understanding why these things are happening, understandably, I've become more and more passionate about environmental issues and how I could help. You know, I bike everywhere, I compost, I gave up meat. Delicious, delicious meat. And I'm sure everyone here has taken those kind of individual steps as well. And you might have noticed it but more and more people are demanding more than individual action on climate change. These are pictures of climate protests all around the world last year. This is an issue that eclipses country borders as well in the US as political ones. Did you know that the majority of Republicans under the age of 38 now think the government should be doing more to address climate change? What exactly is doing more? You know, that question isn't something I really thought in depth about, even as someone who is a self-proclaimed climate activist. A lot of people, including me, do rightfully believe that the government should be the one stopping climate change. But, you know, what exactly do people expect to be done? Luckily, economists and scientists around the world have already largely agreed on the most effective policy. And that is, drum roll put a price on carbon, make the generation of carbon and greenhouse gases cost more and society will necessarily use less of it. That's just simple economics, no moral arguments or convincing needed. And what do we do with that price we put on carbon? Well, the Carbon Dividend and Energy Innovation Act proposes that we take 100% of that revenue, divide it equally and give it back to each and every American. One of the shortcomings, as you might know, of just a carbon fee is that it's regressive, meaning it costs the poor a larger percentage of their income compared to the rich. But with this equally distributed dividend, two thirds of Americans will break even, 
come out ahead. Okay, so that's amazing, right? We have a real solution to stopping climate change and a big old check for Irene. So, you know, why the heck aren't we doing this? It is one thing to be hopeful that someone somewhere out there is going to pass this bill and carbon emissions will go down, pandas will start mating again. But it's another thing to ask yourself, what can I do to help? Well, as you know, I'm here on behalf of the Citizens Climate Lobby, CCL. We're a group of normal citizens who all had that same question. What can I do? Individually, we're all doing our part. If you're here listening to me, you're doing your part. Awesome. But together, CCL has drafted actual climate legislation and gotten it introduced into Congress. That is the kind of impact that only coordinated effort from motivated individuals can produce. That is democracy in action. So if you're at the point of asking yourself, you know, what, what can I do? Call your representatives. Let them know that, yes, the world is kind of a crap sandwich right now, but climate change isn't something we can continue to hope that somebody else is gonna solve. Join CCL's calling campaign. Calling is so easy and so effective. Recently, you'll have seen in the news that coordinated calling campaigns have gotten local policy changed in criminal justice reform. We can use that exact same energy to fight climate change as well. This is my Congressman, Ro Khanna. He's already voiced support for a price on carbon, but not specifically for a carbon dividend. I still want to thank him for his work on climate change and urge him to support the Energy Innovation and Carbon Dividend Act. In fact, I have him on the phone right now, well, his answering machine. Possible. Let me just leave him a message right now. Or please feel free to email us after directly and check our website for more information at conna.house.gov. Thank you. We appreciate hearing from and serving California's 17th Congressional District. Record your message after the tone. Okay. When you're yeah. finished, you can hang up or press one for more options. Hi, Congressman Kana. It's me again, Irene Yang, a resident of Sunnyvale, California. I am again calling to urge you to support the carbon fee and dividend policies. Thank you so much for the work you've done in coronavirus relief efforts and criminal justice reform this year, but climate change is still super important, especially now and especially in the Bay Area. Thank you. Done. That was so easy. It took less time than typing an indignant comment on Facebook. So what do you think? Yes, climate change is happening, but there is a viable solution and support is growing. We just need to coordinate that support. This is what gives me hope the power for ordinary citizens to affect real change. For those who were concerned, or most of us were just alarmed about climate change, I wanna know what gives you hope. How are you gonna act? I, I wanna bring this back up, which is, again, the aha narrative. That is the structure that Irene used. First, she accepted climate change is a problem. Then she offered hope in the form of the solution. And then she described a concrete action that she could take. And that's the aha that helps build that personal connection with the audience. Uh, but the narrative isn't the only thing that Irene is employing, as you pointed out in the discussion that you've highlighted on the way that she speaks. This personal narrative, while it is at the center of the presentation, there are a lot of other things that she's doing. For example, uh, she uses the vivid imagery. She avoids heavy technical graphs and figures. She uses a genuine tone and delivers it earnestly. And she meets the audience where they are by telling her story before the advocacy days, making sure that story is easy to understand and provides a simple action to take. And all of that is to help that audience build that personal connection with climate change. Using all of these tactics aren't only useful for just the presentation, though. They're also useful before the presentation even happens. We found that these tactics help us get our foot in the door with scheduling presentations and at other organizations. Specifically, we've used these ideas to create what we call a presentation trailer and email the trailer to organizations to help us market our presentations. 
Uh, I'm going to show you my presentation trailer. As I play this trailer, see if you can pick out those elements of personal story and narrative that we just talked about, and see if you can tell how this presentation, how, how this trailer is trying to build that relationship with the audience. My name is Ife. I am 28 years old, and I live and work here in Silicon Valley. I am very much your typical young adult. From nine to five, I work as a software engineer at a company headquartered here in Palo Alto. On the weekends, I like to hang out with my friends, but now it's all on Zoom. And I often read the news, stumbling regularly upon articles that detail the damages of climate change. Right now, we hear less about the topic, but last year it was abundant. Many of those articles really bothered me and I wanted to do something about it before it was too late. I would think to myself, sure, I could recycle more, I could compost, I could bike to work, but what difference does I really make in the end? I felt hopeless until I stumbled upon a solution that I felt like could change the game. I would love to share with you that personal journey from despair to optimism. I want to show you why I believe there is hope for a seemingly unsolvable problem. So I invite you to join me for a quick presentation about my story, followed by a Q&A chat with me and my colleague Dave. I look forward to talking with you. At the end of the day, whether it's in your trailer or your presentation, the key is to invite the audience to build that personal connection with climate change. If you're interested in learning more about what we do, we have a starter kit that you can download and read. Uh, you can take a screenshot of this slide right here, or you can go to the chat where John will paste the link to the starter kit. It'll walk you through some of the background research behind this method and give you a simple, uh, a sample slide deck from which you can use to build your own presentation. Uh, we don't have, I'm sorry we didn't get to everybody's questions today, but if you do have questions about the AHA method or any other aspect of presenting, such as virtual presentations, we'll be hosting a general presenters and schedulers office hours led by the leads of the action team. Come here with any questions or concerns, no matter how big or small, and we'll try to help you out today. Thank you so much for attending and contributing your thoughts. If you have questions, please email us, uh, reach out to us. John will also paste the email into the chat. And that is all. Um, okay, thank you so much for coming. I hope you have a great rest of the conference and rest of your weekend. Thank you for listening to this episode of Citizens Climate Lobby's training program. You can tune into more episodes anywhere podcasts are available. Inspired by what you heard today? Join Citizens Climate Lobby to advocate for bipartisan climate solutions. Go to community.citizensclimate.org to find more trainings, resources, your local chapter, national action teams, discussion forums, and more. Be sure to like our Facebook page and follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Citizens Climate. We also invite all of our listeners to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more inspiration. And together, we are creating the political will for a livable world.